God bless you. Testing, can everybody hear? Yes, thank you. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to navigate this, either with these. I can't. The light is very bright, but the dark is very dark, and so I got to figure out which one I'm going to be seeing through the best. And um, I might change through the. I'm going to try without them at first. Um, before I share a little more, um, this last night I was. Um, anybody know C CBN? Um, Christian Broadcasting Network, they were showing, and on the prayer list, we pray for Israel, we pray for the Ukraine, some of the hot spots of this world, but one of the things that's not being reported in Africa, Nigeria, they are um, massacring Christians and destroying churches, and so I just want you to, to add that to your prayer. Can you say amen? And so with that, Lord, Father, we're asking for these 21 days that you would just anoint our time of prayer, Lord. We give ourselves as a vessel, O oh God, to you during this season. And I am asking that you would lead each and every one of us, O oh God. I am asking, O oh God, that we would pray devil-destroying prayers and kingdom-bringing prayers, O oh God. We pray for some of the the, the the neediest places in our world. We, we do pray for, you, um, for the Ukraine. We do pray for Israel, that you would stop those wars and, and save your people. I pray this in Jesus' name. But we also pray for Nigeria and other parts of Africa that are in deep, deep suffering, oh God. And, and, and the enemy of, of the believers are coming to, to destroy them. And Lord, I just ask, oh God, that you would bring salvation to these lands. And we also pray for our land, O oh God, as we approach election. We pray that you would forgive us, O oh God, and that you would, you would bring godly leadership, O oh God. Father, we're asking this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How do I look preaching with one eye? Yeah. I have good news. Um, the, um, I don't... I don't go back to the, the, the eye doctor specialist for four months, and then we'll know specifically. But the other day, for about 10 minutes, my, my bad eye opened up. And the good news is that I was able to see through it. And so, um, so that's, that's huge. Can you say amen? And um, they said, to me when we were starting this process, I said, will I be able to see? Will my eyes still be fine? And they said, our, our first um, priority is to save your life and then to save your eye. And so it looks like both of them have happened. So, amen. Amen. <sighs> Father, I just pray, Lord, you know how... How, how I'm struggling right now and how I'm, my strength is weak. But Lord, I also know that the power of the Holy Spirit is what we depend on and that when we're weak, that, that you are strong. Yeah. Father, I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody say, catch it. Yeah. Catch it. This is so important because you need to catch it. You need to catch a vision. Hallelujah. That in this year... You need to catch that this year you're going to grow in prayer. That this is a year, you know, come on, we make excuses our whole lives. You know, well, that's, well, that's just not our style. We're just, just, we're not like those Jesus freaks, churchy people, you know what I mean? But this is a year that you're going to catch, hallelujah, that you're going to grow in prayer. This is a year that you're going to catch that Jesus is going to specifically teach you how to pray. He's going to teach you how to pray. And this is even something that you got to get. This is a year that you're going to fall in love with praying. Hallelujah. It's not going to be a job. It's not going to be a, you know, oh, well, you know, I'm a Christian, so I need to pray. No, this is going to be the year that in the name of Jesus, you are going to learn to love to pray. Hallelujah. That the best parts of your day are when you're bowed before the almighty God and seeking his face. Now, today we are going to learn... That prayer is a habit. Everybody say habit. habit. 
Prayer is a habit. Hallelujah. It's a holy habit. Can you say hallelujah? I want you to know it's a godly habit. I want you to know that prayer is a glorious habit. Hallelujah. And this year, hallelujah, we're going to learn that prayer is a habit. We're going to learn how to pray prayers that will touch heaven and bless earth. Hallelujah. This year, we're going to learn how to pray prayers that will delight and bless God. Now, I don't know if you know this, but you only learn to pray by praying. And by praying, and by praying. That's the only way you're going to learn how to pray. I, I, I can tell you, I've read books on prayer, and they've been good, and they've blessed me, and they taught me many things, but I only learned really how to pray. When I was a teenage boy, I was fairly newly saved, and I don't know why, I don't know how, what happened, but God gave me a hunger to seek his face. And right now, I ask God, say, God, give me a hunger to seek your face. And God gave me a hunger, so much so that as a, as a young man, I'd come home from school, and I'd get a glass of milk, and I'd get three cookies. Now, I don't know if you know what a 16, 17-year-old idea of three cookies is three stacks of Oreos. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know if you know this, but there's a technique to eating Oreos. Hallelujah. The whole goal is that you dunk them and that as you pick the, the, the Oreo out of the milk, you catch it as it before it gets to the bottom of your cup. That's class, right? Come on now. Now, so as a young boy, I would, I would, I would go home. I would turn on the Christian radio station, I'd eat my three cookies, and, and then God just threw me. And almost, almost every day, if not many days, I would, um, I would go into the woods, and I'd just see God. I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew who I was doing it for. And, and God, as a young boy, he taught me to pray. And God wants to teach you to pray. But the only way he can teach you to pray is if you pray. You need to make time for prayer. You need to make room for prayer. And you need to seek God. In my life as a young man, prayer became a holy habit. And that holy habit turned into a holy hunger. Hallelujah. I learned to pray by praying. Hallelujah. And it's time for you to learn. Oh, how many people have ever read the book of Daniel? Anybody read the book of Daniel? Um, God is good. I have a machine here, and it's not working. It's okay. What else could go wrong today? You know, today I was cleaning my dish, and I dropped it in the sink, and we have one of those little things, and the shards shattered all over, and that was a, just for fun. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know how good God is? Nothing else matters. And um, I didn't get cut. It's because my wife cleaned it up. <laughs> she, she didn't get cut, but she said, you've done enough. Get <laughs> Thank God, I got a good wife. But in, how many people know that one of the main stories or the big stories or the well-known stories in the book of Daniel is Daniel and the lion's den. Daniel and the lion's den. And you all know, I know because you're students of the word, that it's in chapter 6, right? Right, it is. Okay, in chapter 6. And you all know that once we get to chapter 6, that, that's at least the third recorded um, king that Daniel was serving on. When he first came into to, to Babylon, he was, he was a prisoner, and, um, and he, he, he served under King Nebuchadnezzar. And then it was after that was King Belshazzar. And, and this is actually in chapter 6, it talks about King Darius. And let me tell you something. There's about a 65-year period, that, that, that time frame that when you went from when Daniel was taken captive under ne King Nebuchadnezzar to when Darius was serving in, the, in, in Babylon. And then there was about 65 years. And you got to understand that that put Daniel about 80 plus years old, okay, that he's been serving the Lord 
for all this time that he's been serving with distinction. Um, at that time, Darius put 120, they call them sap traps. I, I said that a little wrong. And, but they're like governors. So over all the Babylon, there was like 120 governors. And, and Daniel was, you got to get this, this is so cool. He was one of the top three. He was one of the, the big guys to oversee all of Babylon. Um, let's read verse 3 of Daniel chapter 6. It says, because, Darius, because of Daniel's great ability, the king made plans to place him over the entire empire. Verse 4, it says, then the other administrators and higher Officers began to search for some fault in the way Daniel was handling government affairs. But they couldn't find anything to criticize or condemn him. Daniel was faithful, always responsible, and completely trustworthy. So they concluded in verse 5, our only chance to find ground for accusing Daniel is in reference or relationship to his religion. He did everything right. The only way that they could catch Daniel was to find something in his faith that he could go against. So the, the, these, all these others, these 119 other governors, they, they, they conjived a way. And so what they did, these jealous leaders, they went to King Darius and they said, we got this great idea. We're all in agreement. This is what you need to do. You need to make a law that for the next, the next uh, month, nobody could pray to any god except to you, oh, Darius King, who we all worship. And Darius thought, like every man, that was a great idea. Worship me. And um, they made it a law that if for a whole month that you cannot worship any other God but Darius, King Darius. And if you do, you'll be thrown into the lion's den. Oh, no, that's right. How many people do not want to become lion chow? Not this week, anyway. Verse 10, it says, But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, the law that you're not allowed to pray to any other God but to him, when Daniel learned, to Darius, when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and he knelt down as usual in his upstairs with its window open towards Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, listen to these words, just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. Somebody say amen. Man, this, the, this, this is so powerful. I want to ask you a question. What word... Would you use to describe Daniel's reaction to this law? What is it? Faithful, absolutely. What else? I can't hear you. And my ears are fine. <laughs> Think about it. What, what word? I put the words, it was bold. How many people know that was bold for him to go and pray? It was defiant. It was a, a sign of dedication. Let me tell you something. It was holy. Hallelujah. His, his holy dedication, Daniel's holy dedication, motivated Daniel's boldness in prayer and his consistency in his prayer life. Daniel had developed a holy habit of prayer. Can you say amen? amen? Daniel had learned to pray three times a day. I think that that's cool. 
Daniel was so committed to his prayer life that even when it meant that he had the probability of becoming lion chow, hallelujah, it didn't hinder him or slow him down in his prayer life. Somebody say, I want to be like that. Hallelujah. So the, the officers, they went to Daniel's house and they found him praying. Then they reported it to King Darius and the Lord that he signed could not be changed. And so he had to throw Daniel into the lion's den. Now let me ask you a question. What happens? We got to know this in our souls. What happens when a man of prayer faces f- ferocious lions? Everybody say to yourself, what happens when a man of prayer faces ferocious lions? You know what happens? You know what happens? Ferocious lions become little purdy cat. And that's what happened. Literally, God sent angels to shut the, the, the mouths of those lions. Hallelujah. And literally, God saved Daniel from a lion's den. And you know why? Because Daniel had a place of prayer, a purpose of prayer. Hallelujah. He had an attitude of prayer where he was giving thanks, the scripture says, that even in the midst of his trials, even in the midst of persecution and pending death by hungry lions, Daniel prayed. And I want you to see the amount of prayer he prayed. He prayed three times every day. Now, that's not easy. I'll be honest. I am really good at my prayer time. I get up in the morning, usually before people are moving around, and I pray, and I seek God, and it's my prayer time. But if I'm going to pray three times a day, how am I going to do that? Maybe around lunchtime? Now, I, I know that there's slim chance at this point in my spiritual life, I'm going to have as big a prayer time at lunchtime as I'm going to have in my morning times because how many people know by lunchtime your day is going and things are happening, so on and so on and so forth. And then what about when I went to bed? What about if I took just five minutes? And what about if I prayed for my family? What about if I prayed for, uh, you know, the, the people that I, I heard had needs during that day? And what about if I had a little bit of prayer? Now, some of you are night people and you're not morning people and you're not going to have a great time in prayer in the morning. Then you need to have your big time at night. Hallelujah. The key is that you need to make a habit of prayer. A prayer habit is a a prayer life that's committed, consistent. Now, let me say this. The church has a problem with prayer. And the reason we have a problem is because we are motivated to pray by needs and circumstances. How many people, I guarantee you this, like, I guarantee that 100% of the people here and at home, answer me this question by raising your hand. How many people here pray? You pray. Come on now. You, I'm not saying you pray for now. I'm not saying you even pray for 10 minutes. But how many people here that during a week you'll have at least one prayer go up? Raise your hand. Okay, the problem is that people pray based on uh, being moved to prayer, by, by has seen the need to pray. Um, put that next that slide up to you have. But the call of God is for us to have the habit of prayer. You got to get that God is calling. Everybody say, listen, come on. He's calling my name. And he's not calling you to go to get some ice cream today or go and stop and get coffee. He's calling you to literally make a habit of prayer during the season of your life, a habit of prayer. Hallelujah. Not based on there being great needs. You know, I get prayer requests and, 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 um, and I pray, I stop and pray for each of those prayer requests. But a habit of prayer is going to be because you want God. You're going to pursue God. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Now, in this habit of prayer that Daniel had, he made prayer his priority. 
Hallelujah. Daniel set a bare minimum of how much he was going to pray. This is a bare minimum. He was going to pray three times a day, whether it was legal or whether it was illegal. He was going to pray three times a day, whether he was tired or whether he was awake. He was going to pray three times a day, no matter what else was going in the, uh, around him or in the world. Everybody say, well, baby. That's pretty tough. You have to understand that for Daniel, prayer was a non-negotiable. Do you know what a non-negotiable is? It's something that you're not going to argue about, you're not going to fight about, because you ain't giving in. You got to make prayer non-negotiable, that no matter what else is going on, you are going to be a man or a woman of prayer. Hallelujah, I want you to know, everybody say real life. Real life stops us from doing a lot of things we want to do. But because prayer was such a bold habit of Daniel, real life, the things that were going on, even when you had 119 people coming against you, the the other 119 most prominent and powerful people in the land coming against you as were coming against Daniel, he was not going to negotiate with his prayer life. Somebody say, well, who? And this is a key. Remember I said that we don't want to be motivated just by people's needs and circumstances. This is something powerful. Daniel knew that that prayer was about his relationship with God. That prayer was about him growing to know God. Oh, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And so Daniel prayed because it was his relationship with God. You know, couples need to make communication non-negotiable. No matter how busy you get, no matter what circumstances you get, if you don't communicate as a couple, guess what? Your relationship is going downhill. Every every mom, mom and dad, husband and wife say amen. Okay, well, let me tell you something. One of the most important things about prayer is prayer is communion with God. And Daniel had prayer as a non-negotiable because prayer was about his relationship with God. Everybody say a habit of prayer. That's what I'm going after. Everybody say just do it. You just do it. You need to seek. This is going to sound a little weird, but let me read my notes. You need to seek and to find your sweet spot wherever you are. There's a place of prayer that's a sweet spot. That it's, not, it's not a burden. It's not so hard. But when you're connecting with God, it, no, where, wherever you are and whatever is going on in your life, you need to find that sweet spot. And Father, I pray for each of my brothers and sisters that they would find their sweet spot. Now, This is a 21 days where, as a church, we are emphasizing prayer. Has anybody ever seen somebody push a car? Do you you ever have a flat tire and you need to push your car car, and there's nobody else is around and you you, you open the door and you hold here because you got to do this steering wheel when you need and you and you've actually pushed your car. Right? How many people have ever done that? Do you know, and you feel like Superman. You know? No, you didn't push it a mile, but you pushed it off the road. You know what I'm talking about? And maybe you haven't done that. I have. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, well, I was 20 years old when I did it, too. But now, but now listen to me. You might be, I, my first car was, real car was a Chevy Chevette. My first car I never drove except to drive it to the junkyard. That's a serious story, but for another day. But my first real car was a Chevy Chevette, which is a little putt-putt car. It was four, four-cylinder, you know, rack and pinion steering, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I, I pushed that off the road and felt good. But, you know, I want you to know, no matter how much I lifted, no matter how strong I got, I will never be be able to push a Mack truck, Mack truck, a Mack truck. I, I just, do you know what I mean? But let me tell you something. If I had a hundred of me 
pushing, we could push that Mack truck. Hallelujah. Well, look around. There's more than a hundred of you, hallelujah, praying this month. And if we all pray and seek the face of God, there's no stopping how much we can do for the kingdom and the glory of God. And so you need to own this time of prayer. You, you need to say, this is my 21 days to pray. And how am I going to pray? Now, before we, I remind you of all the times we have as a church to pray. You have my permission to pray anytime, anywhere, with anybody for the next 21 days. You have my blessing to call up, you know, the few people that you hang out with. Maybe you get together on this day and then say, hey, let, let's, let's spend a little time praying when we get together. You have my blessing, hallelujah, to, 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 to have a, a pajama sleepover party where you pray at night. I don't know. I'm making things up as we go along here. But um, but you have my permission to own this season, 21 days of prayer, and find, be, be conniving how you can find more ways to seek God during these 21 days. Amen. And yes, at 6 in the morning um, uh, online, we're going to be praying. And yes, at noon online, we're going to be praying. And yes, the next three Friday nights here, we're going to be praying at 7 o'clock. But let me tell you something. You need to own prayer. My second point, my first point, is you need to make a habit of prayer. Glory, amen. My second point is your prayers should touch heaven and your prayers should bless earth. Literally, your prayers are glorious. Your prayers touch heaven. And they bless earth. And heaven needs, you need to touch heaven. You know, when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he taught them to pray, our Father. Now, he didn't teach them to pray so they would have the right words. He taught them to pray so they would have the right direction. He taught them to pray so they would start off connecting themselves. Our, our daddy, our father, our, the one who loves us, our, the one who created us, our, the one who sees us and watches over us, our, the one who cares for us. Everybody say, our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Holy is your name. Your kingdom come. You're praying God's kingdom come. Your will be done. Lord, your will be done. Your glorious will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. The first part of that, that whole prayer is your touching heaven. Holy be thy name. The Bible says, thou inhabits the praises of his people. And as we start our prayers with Halloween, be the name of God. Holy is your beautiful name, your glorious name, your holy name. As we hallow the name of God, the Bible says that God inhabits those praises. And literally, prayer touches heaven. And that's why when we start praying, we don't just start with, Lord, give me, give me, give me, give me. We start with holy, holy, holy. Hallelujah. Amen. Then the, the next part is that, that um, prayer touches the earth. As we touch God, hallelujah, 
as we touch God and pray for things that are worthy of his glory. Touching God, we also touch earth. And what is the first earthly thing he told us to pray for in his prayer? It says, give us this day our... Is, is there anything more earthly and temporal than our daily bread? It sustains us, but only for a few hours. Okay, and so God is teaching us that our prayers should touch heaven, hallelujah, and they should bless the earth, the needs of the, our family and friends on the earth, the needs that we have, the people that we know might be struggling with their finances or their circumstances or their situation, hallelujah, prayers, we, we touch heaven and we bless the earth and we, we pray, oh God, for this family that has needs and the circumstances and the situation, Lord, oh God, these people, they, they need a motor vehicle, oh God, and these people need a new refrigerator, oh God, and this, my brother over here needs a job. Hallelujah, we touch heaven. Hallelujah, man. And then we bless earth, the needs that we have. How many people know there's a lot of needs here on earth? My dad, I, I call him most, almost every day, and, and I, I, I usually end with saying, Dad, let me pray for you. And he always, or often he'll say, you pray for the people who really need it, the people, you know. And he's thinking about the war over here and the war over there. And I said, Daddy, I'll pray for that. But I also want to pray for you. And um, God designed prayer to touch heaven and to bless earth. It's interesting. Very often we read sections and not the whole chapters. But in, in Luke chapter 11, that's where we have the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven. You know that. And, um, and the, the, after it gets done teaching us how to pray, um, in, in, in Luke chapter 11, verse 5, it, it, um, it, it goes on. Jesus carries a point. And I want us to read the story that Jesus, um, th that Jesus shared attached to teaching on prayer. It says in verse 5 in Luke 11, it says, Then teaching them more about prayer, he used this story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of... He's still talking about bread. This is a little different circumstance. This is for his friend. And he's knocking on his house door at midnight and, and wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. Um, you say to him, uh, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing for him to eat. And supposing he calls out from the bedroom, don't bother me. The doors are locked for the night, and my family and I are in bed, and I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for his friendship's sake, you, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. How many people don't want to be thought of yourself as shamelessly persistent? But God tells us about prayer. Listen, about parts of earth that needs a blessing. This isn't the biggest need. Let me tell you something. If they waited to morning and to eat, they wouldn't have died. But they had a need and they were hungry from a long trip. And that man, he, he wanted to feed and bless his visitors. And so he was persistent with the person he knew who had the bread. Over and knocked, he knocked. He wasn't going away. Everybody say, I go away too soon. I stop praying too soon. You need to have shameless persistence. Um, so there we go. Verse 9, it continues. It says, and so I tell you, keep on asking. Keep on. How many people have stopped asking? Keep on asking and you'll receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you'll find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. The door will be open to you. Shameless, persistent for earthly needs for a friend. Ask. Keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock 
and keep on knocking. Verse 10 says, for everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks find and to everyone who knocks the door will be open. I'm going to jump to the next slide. We need to keep asking for important earthly needs. And in his Jesus' prayer, he keeps, he teaches us, deliver us from evil. Isn't that what he teaches us? Is, it, is there evil when we get to heaven? No. But there's evil here on earth. And so we touch heaven to bless earth, the people of earth. Keep us from evil. How many people struggle sometimes? Come on. How many people have thoughts sometimes? Keep us from evil, Lord. How many people have temptation? And so deliver me. Deliver me from evil. Lead me, Lord, not into temptation. And I love how beautiful, um, how beautiful the Bible is. It says, help us, Lord, forgive me of my sins, my trespasses. And Lord, as I forgive those who trespass against me. Is there a hallelujah in the house? I want to share a few more thoughts before we close in prayer. The third point that I have, the first point is prayer is a habit. The second is prayer should and bless earth. And my third point is that your prayers, unbeknownst to you, bless God like you don't know. Now, I can take um, a long time to teach this, but prophetically, how many people know one of the biggest books in the Bible about the, what's going to happen in the future is the last book in the Bible. It's called the book of Revelation. You're going to have to trust me on some of this. And I'm going to ask the worship team to come out. Good. Um, you're going to have to trust me on this. Um, one of the key moments in the whole book of Re Revelation, everybody say a pivoting moment. Okay, is is that 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 the that the the the, the seal needed to be open? Okay, are you are you ready? And nobody was found worthy to open the seal. Are you with me? Okay, until Jesus came as a lamb that was slain. And um, we're going to go to that verse. And I want to teach you something about prayer that is glorious. And, and you have to understand the context is this is a, one of the most pivotal times in prophetic thought. Okay, are you with me on this? So these verses are, have heightened, should heighten our attention um, for where they fall in context, okay? Are you with me? In Revelation 5, 7, Jesus stepped forward and he took the scroll from the right hand of the one sitting on the throne. And when he took the scroll, the four living be beings and the 24 elders, Pharaoh fell down before the lamb and each one had a heart and they had golden bowls filled with incense, which, is, which are the prayers of God's people. At one of the most crucial points in prophetic history, uh, a pivotal moment, hallelujah, that, that, that if wouldn't happen, the kingdom of God couldn't have come. In one of the most precious moments, God draws our attention to these creatures that have these bowls and the 24 elders, hallelujah, the harps, and they had golden bowls filled with incense. And what does the Bible describe that incense as? That's too glorious to be true. Because we're the saints of God, those who are separated. You no, know, saints aren't those who they build statues out of. Saints are the people who believe that Jesus is the Lord and Savior and are doing their very best to live and follow him. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And at that moment, it's the prayers of the saints that bring blessing to God and to Jesus and to the heavenly beings. That's how important your prayers are.
Jesus, in closing, we are going to take a few moments and I'm going to lead you in prayer using the, um, could you guys throw me that box of tissues right there? There you go. <laughs> Not bad with one eye. Here you go. <laughs> My heart. <laughs> Yeah, you try catching it, honey. This is how we resolve our conflict at home. Whoa, I'm boiling back. Oh, I just looked. There's one bag right there. Uh, uh, excuse me. So we're going to take a few minutes and pray, prayer to pray. I'm going to read the Lord's Prayer, and then we're going to follow after the pattern of that prayer. I'm going to lead you in prayer, but I don't want you just listening to me. You here at, at home, I want you to, to pray and to, to pray along with me. And um, you're not Mike, so don't pray. You don't yell out your prayers. That will get confusing. But I want you guys, where you're sitting, I want you to pray. Amen. So in verse 11, verse 2, <coughs> he said to them, when you pray... Father, just make this a holy moment. I, I'm asking, oh God, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. For we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, we come to you. To you is who we pray. To our loving Heavenly Father. To the one who created us. The one who loved us so much that he sent his only son. You are our Father God, our Abba Father Lord. Hallelujah. And we hallow your name. Hallelujah. Your name of mercy, your name of kindness, your name of goodness, your name of provider, your name as shepherd, your name as healer, your name as the lover of our souls. We honor your name. We hallow your name. Blessed, precious is the name of our Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you are called El Shaddai. Hallelujah, the God of might. You are called Jehovah, oh God. Hallelujah, you are the God of our salvation. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who is and was and is to come. Everybody say holy, holy, holy. You are holy, God. We worship your holy name, oh God. And Lord... We pray thy kingdom come, Lord. Lord, your kingdom, O oh God, your righteous, holy kingdom, we pray that it comes in our families, O oh God. Lord, let your kingdom come, O oh God. Lord, let it come at our jobs, O oh God, your kingdom come. Lord, we pray for our nation. Lord, sometimes we see so messed up, so much disunity. But Lord, we pray that your kingdom of love and unity would come, Lord. We pray that your kingdom would come. Lord, let your kingdom come, oh God, in Israel. Let your kingdom come in Ukraine. Let your kingdom come in Nicaragua, Nigeria. Let your kingdom come, oh God. Lord, bring salvation, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask that your will be done, not ours, oh God. Father, we pray for the school system, for our children as they grow and learn, Lord. We pray that your kingdom would come, Lord, righteousness and holiness. And Lord, I, I pray that you would give us this day our daily bread. And Father, I'm not going to say it out loud for others to hear, but Lord, I, I'm praying right now for the those precious families that I know that are really struggling financially. Some of them need new jobs. Some of them need better housing, oh God. Father, I'm asking for mercy, Lord. I'm asking for those that are sick, oh God. Those that are grieving, have lost their loved ones. Father, I'm asking, oh God, you'd give them their daily bread and meet their daily needs, oh God. Father, I'm praying, Lord, that you would forgive me of 
any sins, any, anything I didn't see, any way I might have hurt somebody or disappointed somebody. Lord, I'm asking, oh God, that you would forgive me, Lord. Father, I'm praying that you would search me and see if there's any wrong way in me, Lord. I'm praying that you would give me clean hands and a pure heart, Lord. I don't want to lift up my soul to idols, oh God. I want to love you and serve you, oh God. I'm asking that you forgive me. And Lord, right now, I remember if anybody hurt me, Lord, I, I forgive them, Lord. I ask that you would minister grace. Hallelujah. Father, I pray, oh God, for those who are struggling with temptation, addiction, oh God. I bind that, that, that power that's over them. I'm asking that you would deliver them from evil, oh God. That you would deliver them from temptation, oh God. That you would make them strong where they are weak, oh God. Hallelujah. That you would give them joy where there's battles, oh God. Father, I'm just asking, oh God. I'm asking for your mercy. And Father, I pray for each person here, Lord, that these next 21 days would be holy. 